myself Ankita Vishesh your bio educator today's topic is all about science of life this is the first chapter taken from the syllabus of class 11 this is the first part of this chapter which will cover a basic idea about living organisms with their characteristics so let's have a look into this video first of all we need to know what the life is all about so life can be defined as a property of the living organism that distinguishes from the non living substances in some features like response to stimuli growth metabolism and reproduction now we are talking about living organisms so what are they they can be defined as a self replicating evolving which means they can develop self regulating interactive systems which are capable of responding to external or internal stimuli okay next coming to the characteristics of life so as we have come to know from the definition of the life it is the property which the living organisms have so the basic characteristics of life are shape and size response to stimuli growth metabolism respiration excretion reproduction movement and locomotion nutrition mutation evolution reticency adaptation and secretion now we will briefly discuss about each features one by one the first one is shape and size most of the living organisms have their specific body shape and size though there are some exceptions like amoeba sponge etc they do not have their specific body shape and size the next one is response to stimuli this is very relatable to understand as we all give response to any cues surrounding to us so the living organisms are capable of responding to their surrounding stimuli such as physical stimuli chemical stimuli or biological stimuli basically living organisms sense the stimuli and give response to the environmental cues like plants give response to light temperature water physical contact etc also photo period the date time during which an organism receives illumination affects the reproduction in seasonal breeders both in case of animals and plants another thing is that central nervous system plays an important role to respond to external stimuli in us now the third feature is growth so growth is basically the development of body's different parts it is seen in every or living organisms growth occurs by intake and assimilation of food stuff which increase our body mass and number in living organisms growth takes place during a uh, internal process that is cell division we will discuss about cell division in detail in our upcoming video now animals show growth up to the certain age whereas plants show a continuous growth throughout their life the next feature is metabolism it is one of the key ingredients of living organisms the word metabolism comes from the greek word metabol which means change the metabolism refers to the set of life sustaining chemical reactions which are continuously occurring in our body and catalyzed by enzymes there are three purposes of metabolism which are the conversion of food to energy to run cellular processes like cell division transmission of nerve impulses etc the conversion of food or fuel to building blocks for protein lipids nucleic acids and some carbohydrates and the last one is the elimination of nitrogenous waste products so this enzyme catalyzed reaction allow organisms to grow and reproduce to maintain their structure and to respond their environment now the metabolic reactions or the metabolism is divided into two parts such as catabolism and anabolism 
so the catabolism basically denotes to the breaking down of compounds like the breaking down of glucose to pyruvate by the process cellular respiration whereas the anabolism denotes the building up of compounds like carbohydrates lipids and nucleic acids usually the catabolism releases energy and anabolism consumes the energy this is the basic difference between catabolism and anabolism next is respiration which is the physiological process involving the production of energy typically with the intake of oxygen and the release of carbon dioxide from the oxidation of complex organic substances the respiration is a kind of catabolic reaction as it breaks down the small molecules from digestion into even smaller one as atp or energy is created so it is also exothermic and energy producing process now coming to the next feature which is excretion so excretion is a physiological process by which metabolic waste is eliminated from a living organism so what are the excretory products the excretory products are the waste products toxic gases which are excreted from the body examples are urea uric acid carbon dioxide ammonia some nitrogenous alkaloids in plants like nicotine caffeine morphine cocaine and some non nitrogenous products like fistulate in case of plants the waste from the respiration and photosynthesis are usually considered as by products as they can be used in further plants usually store their waste products in certain areas like leaves whereas animals use their excretory system to remove the waste products from their body such as urine sweat etc now one thing should be noted that defecation is not excretion but it is ejection because defecation is the removal of undigested food material from our body whereas the excretion is the elimination process by which our metabolic waste are removed from our body okay so the next one is reproduction okay the reproduction is a process by which all the living organisms produce their offspring for continuing the lineage of a species which is generally divided into two types asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction basically asexual reproduction involves one parent and produce offspring that are generally identical to each other and to parent example fungi and sexual reproduction which is in consist of two parents and produce offspring that are genetically unique now the next feature is movement and locomotion where the locomotion is the displacement of body from one place to another whereas the movement is the displacement of a body or a part of the body from its origin next feature is nutrition nutrition is a process of a living being's ability to eat foods and use the components of those foods to fuel growth and development nutrition is also divided into two types holozoic nutrition and holophytic nutrition holozoic nutrition refers to a nutrition mode in which energy and organic building blocks are obtained through the internalization of food particles followed by the internal processing while the holophytic nutrition refers to the nutrition mode in which energy and the organic building blocks are obtained through the photosynthesis now the holozoic nutrition occurs in animals while the holophytic nutrition occurs in plants next is mutation so the term mutation came from the latin word mutationem which means i move or i change mutation refers to any change in the nucleotide sequence 
as a result of a failure of the system to revert the change. Thus, the altered sequence is permanent and heritable. The example of mutation includes two headed snake. One thing you have to remember that Hugo the Vries is called as the father of mutation. Now, mutation is also two types. One is small scale mutation, which affects one or more nucleotides of a gene, which is also subdivided into three types. Number one, substitution mutation. Number two, insertion mutation. And number three, deletion mutation. Next is the large scale mutation, which involves a change in the chromosome, which is also divided into three types. Number one, amplifications or gene duplication. Number two, deletions of large chromosomal regions. And number three, the chromosomal inversion. The next feature is evolution, which is the change in the heritable characteristics of biological populations over the successive generations. This is long term process. These characteristics are expressions of genes that are based on from parent to offspring during reproduction. Again, you have to remember another thing that is Charles Darwin is considered as the father of evolution. Now coming to the another feature which is adaptation. So in a simple language, adaptation is the process by which a species becomes fitted to its environment. Living organisms are adapted to their environments in a great variety of ways. In their structure, physiology and genetics, in their locomotion or dispersal, in their means of defense or attack, in their reproduction and development, and in their other aspects. A clear example of adaptation includes the melanistic phenotype of the peppered moth, which increased in the number in Britain following the Industrial Revolution, as dark colored moths appeared cryptic against the soot darkened trees and escaped predation of birds. Now the next one is a very interesting feature which is Rhythmicity. Rhythmicity is a unique feature in living organism. Body's physiological activities always occurs generating its own rhythm. Examples are contraction of heart which are controlled by specialized cardiac muscle cells called the pacemaker cells. Now coming to the last feature is secretion. So secretion is the release of useful substance by a gland or cell. The enzymes and hormones that facilitate and regulate complex biochemical processes are secreted from different glands of the body. Examples are hormone secretion from the endocrine glands, saliva secretion from the salivary glands, bile secretion from the liver, secretion of milk from mammary glands, gum, nectar, tannins, resin secretion from the plants. We will discuss these topics in detail in our upcoming videos. Now here are some questions related to this topic. Number 1. What are the key characteristics of living organisms? Give two examples of living organisms that do not have specific body shape and size. Number 3. What are the catabolism and anabolism? Which of the following is or are correct? Respiration is an exothermic reaction or catabolic reaction or anabolic reaction or the option 4 or 5. Defecation is not an excretion but it is ejection. Why do you say so? Next question is 
why the excretory product of plants is preferred to be called as byproduct rather than waste product. What is the basic difference between asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction? Define the holozoic nutrition and holophytic nutrition with examples. Who is called as the father of mutation? What are the two types of mutation? Who is called as the father of evolution? Give one clear example of adaptation. Which cell controls the contraction of heart? So please solve this. If you have any doubts or queries related to this portion, let me know in the comment section below. Or you can also post your question on our website. Link is in the description box. We will try to answer them all. And if you find this video helpful, then please give it a big thumbs up and hit the bell icon to get further notification for more such videos. We'll see you on next Wednesday where we're gonna learn the next part of this chapter which is biodiversity. Thanks for watching. Take care and keep watching. Bye Holly.